Welcome back, welcome back. Today, I want to bring you along with me to basically a day in the life of a freelance multimedia journalist. That is me now. Um, along the way of me trying to f find my feet in where my career is going, I have incorporated a few things into my skill set. For those who don't follow me on Instagram, I am now working with FeelSA, which is a news website um, that provides SA with feel-good news. Essentially, we go out there and we find good things ordinary South Africans are doing despite the mm show <laughs> that this country is right now. Started working with them in January. They're based in Cape Town and they basically needed somebody in Joburg to to go find these stories. So I basically source the story, I pitch it, gets approved. I then call the stakeholders slash the sources uh, and figure out if they are available, what dates and what times that we agree to a time. And then I show up, I shoot um, the story, I interview them, and I do a PTC, and then I come back home, I script, I send it through to Cape Town, they sub it, they send it back to me, I voice it, I video edit it, and then I send it back to Cape Town, they QC it, they send it to to ETV to air um, my stories twice a week um, during their primetime news show right at the end. So it's basically the tail end of story. So basically today I want you to tag along with me while I go cover a cool story. It's about UJ, University of Johannesburg, 3D printing houses in this country of ours where the Department of Human Settlements has a backlog of about 2.5 million houses that they're supposed to deliver to the people. So this new technology promises to be of help in that regard. And yeah, let's go check out what that's about. Um, obviously, I'll only be able to publish the story once the story that I'm going to cover today has aired. Um, I don't know how the rights work with that, but I mean, this is a completely different thing, so it shouldn't be an interference at all. Um, yeah, my voice is doing weird things. I did share a bottle of rum with Manani last night, so I'm hoping that's just that's all this is but I'm feeling a little fatigue and I feel COVID -y things at the back of my throat um, pray for me hopefully we'll get through this day together let me put on some pants and some shoes so we can go do I need to put on these pants oh really did you see my cooch just now good gosh <laughs> let's try that again You didn't see my crew. You're not, you don't see anything. I don't think you see anything. <laughs> Relax. Chill out. If you see anything, that's on you. YouTube will flag this. Uh, uh, uh. If you don't have to shimmy while you put on your jeans, it means you don't got a huge pedonk donk. Shim, the energies are dipped in. We're here now, I'm just waiting for the professor and one student I'm going to interview. And then they need to open for me and play around with the stuff. And I'm hoping to take maximum an hour. Kimberly! 
for me. You came with me to a story. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I thought it was a good idea to just take you along with me. Take you along with me. It is 4 a.m. Good morning. I am so late. It's actually not 4 a.m. It's about 4.47. I'm running late because I'm chasing one, the sunrise, and two, to get to my source. Today I'm doing a story about a guy in Atridgeville slash social movie who makes peanut butter and jam sandwiches for kids to grab on their way to school. It's so cool. I definitely did catch something and I'm str struggling right now. Yesterday I was just kaput. My energy was gone. So when I got home, I couldn't even script or do anything. I just guzzled some penicillin for flu and I passed out. Um, hopefully I'll get to continue this journey with you. I'll follow you here until I do my work uh, today. Let's go to Attridgeville. You know you're driving far if you have to hit a toll gate. I just pulled up the camera. I didn't realize I wasn't looking at my back. The sun is rising behind me. I'm gonna need to stop somewhere and just get that. Hello. How are you? So good, thank you. Have a good day. The thoughts build up until I can't hear. That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety filling up every space, no privacy uh, And silently it could build and build until you finally see Whoa, it's taking over, damn no closure, moving closer No exposure, I just wanna be a It's been a whirlwind of a morning. Got up at four. I thought I had a cold, but after that walk, feels like I'm alive again. Also, that walk made me realize the baby girl needs to go to the gym. One, two. I can actually do it because now I feel good. You know, after a little bit of exercise, now I'm having my coffee. I needed this so much. So that's it for watching me um, do my work as a freelance multimedia journalist. Um, I was incredibly moved by Ujikov and his friends. Um, they're by Atridgeville. They do incredible work. They're so kind. Um, they essentially wake up every single morning before at the crack of dawn and then they go and make these peanut butter sandwiches for the kids in their community who are disadvantaged, obviously. I think I was incredibly moved because they don't have like tons of money to do this. They sell chicken feet and amakoslo snacks um, to a close high school. 
Um, even the kids in that high school know that the reason why they saw there is so that they can, at the end of the day, go buy bread and and butter and peanut butter and jam to sell, not to sell, to give away to the kids in the morning. So they make sure that they, they sell out the stuff that they sell. Um, and they generally just need as much help as they possibly can. Um, there was this one shot that I took that really, really just, it really just moved me. Um, so they have these two lines where the kids um, wait and queue for their sandwiches. And I wanna say there was probably like f just about 50 kids that were waiting that day. And so, anyway, so they, they, they stand in these two lines and out of those 60, plus minus 60 kids, I think there were three parents that day to make sure that their kid got a sandwich before they got into the bus to school. Um, and then towards the end, I think because they were rushing and the bus was coming, there was a scrum right to the front. Um, and one of the moms that was there, I don't know if she was a mom or she was a parent or a guardian or whoever she was, um, she rushed to the front and started just grabbing sandwiches. I think she grabbed three. And this is no in no way me judging her. Um, to be honest, I don't know if I was in the same situation, I don't know how I would behave as well. Um, just poverty, hunger, survival will make you do things that you um, ordinarily wouldn't. And this is not to say, to excuse her behavior, but I'm just saying anyway. Um, and so that meant the rest of the kids that were behind, that were in front, when she, she jumped to the front to get her kids stuff, didn't get, um, Sami's that morning. So Jacob and the Jens can only give from what they have and they don't have much. So it really just, it frustrated me and I didn't know what to do myself. Um, because once those sandwiches are finished, they're done. Um, there's, there's nothing to be done afterwards. So another thing that really touched me was, and I don't know if it's, it's probably more of a personal thing that happened for me internally um there was these two kids um i'm not sure if the one the older one was the big brother or maybe i don't know what their relationship is but he had his shoulder over the little brother in front of him the whole time as he's inching closer to the front um and then once they got there uh, i think because jacob was busy right like they just go they make the sandwich and then they give out not even looking anymore because they have to go fast um, I mean, but of course they interact with the kids, they know them, they know who's naughty, they know who's, who's funny, they know who's silly or whatever. Um, but he was giving out the sandwiches, so he gave um, the big brother the sandwich. And I just, I saw him stand and wait until he got the sandwich and then he ushered him out of the line. Yeah, I was just really moved by that, that those two contrasting things where um, the kid waits until it's his turn but the world isn't like that right because there's a an older person who's going to bulldoze through and so until they get to the front of the line and then you know it's first come first serve there's nothing to be done about that life isn't fair um but i just i think i was just moved by the fact that he's so he's a kid himself but he has to take care of his brother just to make sure that the person that he cares about is taken care of as well. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That just, it's my big sister things, I guess, that were happening. Anyway, so please do me a solid. If you have any kind of money, it doesn't have to be a lot, literally from 30 rand, 50 rand. Um, as my, how much is bread now? I think bread is 20 bucks. Maybe, so maybe just even one loaf of bread will be very helpful to them. They have to do this every single day. Like I said, they don't have funds. They rely on donations and um, the chicken feet and the snacks that they sell to a high school nearby. So yeah, if you can, if you're that way inclined or if, I don't know, I don't know what's possible for you, but even if it's just like for me, if I can encourage even five people um, 
to donate to them. I leave the their banking details for the NPO. They're legit people. I can vouch for them. They're really genuine. They just need as much help as they can get. And I'm hoping you could be that help. Thank you so much for watching this, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. -bye.